Welcome to Power Charting. I am your host, Bruce Frazier, and we are on part two of our point and figure construction workshop. This is all about how to construct point figure charts, how to get the charts that are most useful to you. Uh, not really about the Wyckoff method per se and horizontal point and figure counting methodology, but there's a lot of material out there that you can turn to for that. And so let's get started and talk a little bit about today's agenda. So scaling methods, uh, we got into that somewhat last week. And by the way, if you did not watch part one, you're going, oh, I shouldn't watch part two until I see part one. Stick around. I think you'll find that there's a lot here that you're going to be able to relate to and then circle back and watch part one later on if the point and figure method really appeals to you. Scaling methods uh, are very important to making point and figure charts that are really usable to you. And so there's the traditional, which we got into a little bit last week, ATR scaling, average true range, and percent scaling. Very interesting concepts, very important actually, and you'll see why in a minute. Intraday point and figure charting is one of my favorites. I love to do it. And designing usable intraday point figure charts is uh, its a bit of a knack, it's an art. And so there are scaling issues that need to be resolved and we're gonna work on those and, and fix that so that it's really easy for you to get your arms around uh, the uh, proper scaling to see the charts that you want to see. Uh, go to my blogs where there is a lot of good information on point and figure charting. There's case studies, there's horizontal count method, construction blogs that are in the you know early episodes or early uh, blogs, which go back to 2015, 2016. But just go through and pick out the ones that really interest you, good topics. And uh, so with that, uh, let's, uh, here's actually one, January 1, 2016, go to the archive, go right to that date, intro to point and figure construction, which is really a uh, nice piece to go along with what we're doing here. Okay. Oh, upcoming webinar. My teaching partner, Roman Bogomazov, and I will be teaching a Wyckoff mar market discussion open door session. So this is going to be open to all December 1st. It's a free session. Uh, go to wyckoffanalytics.com and sign up. It's going to be a lot of fun. And it's on Wednesday afternoon, 3 p.m. Pacific time. So I uh, hope to see you there. Oh, and we'll stop at that point and come back to this later on. I will be right back. So here we have a sharp chart, daily data, it uh, traditional sort of a typical looking normal scaling. Let's go down and make a point and figure out of this. We can go right to the bottom. You see point and figure here. We can click on this. And now we have a three box reversal standard traditional scaling point and figure chart. You uh, can certainly change those parameters by going down here and adjusting your parameters and then save as your default. So this is my default. Now, if we want to alter this chart and turn it into something else, uh, let's say that we want to make it look more like the daily chart. So here we have, we want to use uh, end of day data, daily, and we'll change all that for intraday, high, low type. We talked about that last time. Well, let's go to a one box method, which would give us more sort of swing trading possibilities. Look at this big, beautiful trading range here. And then it came down for a higher low, turned up, had a really beautiful rally from the 316 area all the way up to 400. So uh, that's a really attractive looking structure. From a point figure perspective, I'd look at that and go, oh, I really wanna count that. And so this is really uh, a great looking chart. Let's make it a little bigger, go from 780. Let's take it up to 900 and um, update it. So a little bigger, uh, bigger X's and O's, really nice. Okay, so now traditional scaling, I like this chart. And also here's another reaccumulation right here. And this covers, this is the beginning of 2021 right here. So big, 
reaccumulation from February over to late May uptrend, another reaccumulation uptrend, really nice. Okay, and this is a one box method. So it only takes a one box reversal to move over into the next column, which is gonna give you much more well-defined uh, uh, data sets. You see more, more highs and lows. This is what we want to do. Now, what if we change the scaling and we go from traditional to something else? Well, I find that one of the best things you can do right away is go to ATR scaling. And so when we go to ATR, average true range scaling, using the standard uh, method, we see that we still do get this reaccumulation structure and this one here, and then the rally upwards. And where we were prior a four point scaling from a, a uh, each one of these scaling increases over time. Now we're at 4.59. So four is very close on the traditional to 4.59. Well, we want to use ATR scaling to help us with uh, being able to really structure the best charts possible. And so what happens if we make this say, uh, we go from ATR scaling, it says it wants to be 4.59. We go to user defined here, see the box size. And let's say we want to change it to 250. Now we're going to get a lot more detail. We're going to see a lot more. Oh, and we're, we're not going to see nearly as much information. This is going back to April. You can see the number five here. That's the first entry in May, first entry in June and so on. So we have much more granular information across this area, but we can see more detail in the accumulation structure. Look at the beautiful test of the low here to here, and then the reversal off of that attempt to come back down makes a higher low. This is a nice higher low test at 357 and a half. Look, each one of these is two and a half points different from the prior. And so then a beautiful upward trending move we have right now. So uh, this is uh, how we make changes. This is gonna be really important when we get to uh, intraday. So user defined is a feature that we have. Well, let's do this. Let's go to uh, five box reversal and ATR scaling on the cues and see what we get. Well, wow, interesting. So now five box is really big. That's like the equivalent of going to, uh, it's not a perfect comparison, but call it a monthly chart. And so this is really should give us a lot more information. Wow, goes all the way back to O2. So this is the O2 low right here. And this is the big uptrend from O2 to the present. Let's see, this uh, low is at 18.36, goes up to 400. That's a whopping move for an index. Now, the scaling, again, continues to be 4.59. So that is the ATR scaling that's appropriate for looking at very long-term data here. And you can see that you get a really big uptrend. You can't get it all on the screen. So... What happens if we change this ATR to user defined? And I will use the ATR to help me to understand what the proper scaling should be. And then I can adjust accordingly. Well, now I'm gonna do something a little crazy. I'm gonna to go to 10 point scaling. Let's see what we get here. We should see um, a whole lot inf less information. Here's the O2 low and look at what we get. Each one of these is 10 points and we go through time and we're up to 400 right here, but look at this move. We have uh, from 230 uh, onward, each one of these 10 point moves has come without any kind of a correction of five 10 point reversals, which would be 50 triple Q points, really all the way back to this period here. Now this says five, we'd have to look at the year. So this is 2021. This is May of this year. So look at the March upward in this index. I mean, this is kind of a strange perspective, but it really is impressive to look at how much the move has been, 180 to 400. 
without any kind of a correction of five boxes, which is five boxes times 10, times 10 points. So this has been quite the march upward that we've had here. Okay, so now we see that we can make all kinds of adjustments and we can look at point and figure in all different time frames and so on. Let's go back to three box reversal, pretty traditional, go to dynamic ATR, which should be 4.59 and it is. And we see here uh, the upward trend, a series of higher lows throughout. And this is back to 2020 here, it looks like. And then because we can see March, April, May, June of 2021 right here. And so there's the upward trend and acceleration we can see through the higher lows. Pretty interesting on how we can use that. Now, if we change this and go to say the S&P, and you could put any stock in here, here's the S&P over that same time period. Well, it's not the same time period, but uh, same data set. ATR scaling says that it should be 37.34 S&P points for scaling changes here, three box reversal. Here's the 2020 low across this area, and then a dramatic rally upwards. And so here's a reaccumulation here. Here's one here, here's one here, here's one here. And so we can see those. Now we could go in and zoom in and study them in detail as we go along here. So the uh, ATR scaling is really important. Now, what I would do is I would tend to look at this and say, okay, 37. Uh, 0.34, let's just round this out. And I do this just to make the chart look a little prettier. Let's just round this out to 40. So we go 37, 40, whatever to 40. And you see, it doesn't really change things much, but now we have uh, 40 points scaling all through here, all the way up. Now, let's jump ahead because this is a good time because of just the sheer nature of this move since 2020. Let's go ahead and put in percent scaling. Now, percentage scaling is really a kind of a different beast. And so here we want to, uh, let's put in 2% right there, box percent. Let's put in 2%, three box reversal, see what we get. Uh, interesting. So this gives us a lot more data. I can just tell looking at this, that this is the 2018 low, December of 2018. This is the 2020 low. And this is the rally that we've had off of the early 2020 low. Now, notice this. This is all 2% scaling changes. This is the equivalent of a logarithmic chart. This is logarithmic scaling that we're looking at. It's not arithmetic scaling. And so we're seeing sort of a different beast here. Now, this rally upwards went up to the highs of the uh, 2019, this is actually February here, the two of 2020, went up consolidated here and then just has been on a tear. Each one of these is 2% higher than the prior. All the way up, this is just a very wicked advance. And when you use percentage scaling, you see these things where you couldn't necessarily really grasp the extent of it in the, uh, in the course of using arithmetic scaling. So here, look at this, incredible. Here's, look at this move up. And then it consolidated for really all of 2018 and then had a big shakeout type move at the end of 2018, which produced a, a you know, pretty substantial rally from 2018 at this low of 2371.93 and went all the way up to 3387.7. So there are counting conventions for point percent scaling, but they are a subject for another day and we could spend hours on how to conduct a counting. But for those of you that like to look at logarithmic moves in stocks or in indexes, uh, this is a great tool to use. And you can see things here that maybe don't show up quite as clearly in a vertical bar chart that uses log scaling. Now we can change this 
let's go to 1% scaling. And so now you can see that in the 1%, it's much more granular. We can see the base in 2020 on this chart. We see the ups and downs. This is a three box reversal. So it takes a three right here. You can see it right in this area. You can see uh, three red O's down and we can see, let's put that right there that that is the minimum requirement for a reversal down. So it's one, two, 3% decline. And then it turned around and went back up again and reversed back into an uptrend. So these are all fours, but a minimum of three is required. There's a three there and then upwards it has gone. And look at this, this move doesn't look that big, but this is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If I did my counting right, maybe that's seven, eight. So that's eight, two percent move or eight, one percent moves. And so you would have to compound that also. It's not just adding one percent times eight upward entries. You have to compound each one of those to be able to uh, get the appropriate um, scaling. And that's what makes point, uh, point figure uh, of percent scaling uh, somewhat tricky. And uh, so, but still the computer does it and that's very cool. All right, let's continue on. So now you know, know how to do percent scaling. Right here, you can adjust the scaling yourself. You can adjust the reversals yourself and uh, fool around with it. You can't break it. You can save these charts once you get them the way you want them. I'm going to show you some more examples here in just a minute. As a matter of fact, let's just do that right now. I'm going to pause and I will be right back. Here we see the S&P 500 index, large cap, and I'm sort of sticking with indexes, but please use these on individual stocks and the ones that you really follow. And you can see that this is a uh, one box reversal method right here, and it's 2% scaling. So the scaling convention is all through here and a uh, beautiful uptrending move. This is the 2020 low and uh, the consolidation, and then the uptrend begins. This is what we call in Wyckoff a reverse use of trend lines because we're drawing it over the top of an uptrend rather under, than underneath the bottom. I always use dotted line as a convention for the oversold line. And in this case, the supply line over the top is a solid line. If it was underneath the uh, the trend line we were using, then that would be the solid line. We call it demand line. But anyway, here's a point here that we're drawing on. Here's a point here that we're drawing on. And then we draw on the intervening low and we just take a parallel of this trend line. Well, look what happened right here. We draw this. Now this is percent scaling and look how well this worked. It uh, became overbought through over the top here, through over the top here and then touched on all these occasions all the way up. And here we are again, uh, throwing over slightly over the top here at the current level that we're at. So this would be by definition an overbought condition in the uh, in trendline analysis and in the Wyckoff method. And this is all happening on percentage scale and not on regular arithmetic scaling. And then we take the, we draw the parallel underneath. Beautiful. How well is this working here? Just uh, continues to have good touches. Here it accelerated up. We'll see whether this can, uh, because it did make a higher low here in the midpoint of the uh, upward trending channel, whether it can start to accelerate higher from here or whether it needs to stop. We would do some horizontal point and figure count methodology to try to identify whether this is a place where it wants to stop and build a new uh, uh, causal structure for another move up. Uh, hard to say, but from this analysis, we are effectively overbought. Here is the S&P, one box uh, reversal, 1% scaling. Now we're looking at an intraday chart. So this goes back to January. This is actually November, December, January of 2020, 2021. And we've drawn on this point here, 
this adjacent point here, and we've drawn this uh, reverse use of trend lines over the top. Look at all these beautiful touches through here. And this all came from just drawing the trend line on this area at the very beginning of the uh, stride. And the fact that it came back down off of this level said, hmm, we should draw that trend line. And oversold comes back in again. And uh, then you can just see all these touches overbought throws over and that is uh, in August and it sends the market into a reaccumulation that goes down to the oversold channel and now it's rallied up and back out again and just as we saw prior on this chart one box reversal method it is also overbought beautiful touches underneath on the oversold line this is really a pretty chart now in the queues, uh, we're gonna go, this is a uh, one box reversal, 10 minute. So we're gonna turn, go to now our intraday. And so let's get to work on that. So I'm gonna come back to this chart and we'll look at it after we see how to construct intraday point and figure. Intraday charting, it's certainly one of my favorites. And so here we are, at, you're at your dashboard, stockcharts.com. And uh, you want to make a chart, a point and figure chart of the cues, let's say. So we select point and figure right here, and it's going to give us our uh, standard traditional chart that we have defaulted to. In this case, again, always using daily data, three box reversal. And this is going to give us a daily chart, but we want to do an intraday chart. And so let's go down to the uh, chart attributes and the uh, chart scaling and let's uh, change this. So period here says daily, let's make this a uh, 15 minute triple Q chart. And oh my, that just doesn't look useful at all, does it? So <laughs> this is an intraday chart. Uh, it doesn't speak to me. I don't know about you. So uh, let's see if we can uh, fix this. What do we do to get intraday to be able to show us its ebbs and flows, ups and downs? And so 15 minute traditional scaling, three box reversal. Well, let's start by going to ATR scaling and to see what happens. Oh, now all of a sudden we have something that looks a whole lot more interesting. This is a beautiful accumulation style structure and uh, has a lot of Wyckoff attributes, which I will not talk about today, but you can see a cause is built for a move up. And so this is in the period uh, back in October, back to, um, uh, it looks like uh, late September. And so this is a three box method and the box size for ATR is 0.79. So we need to be able to use ATR to give us an idea about how we should be scaling our charts to be able to get an appropriate amount of data. Look at this nice looking reaccumulation right here. Big climactic blow off, correction, comes back into the upward striding trend and now it's built a cause and now it's running back up to the highs. It's made a slightly higher high right here. This is really interesting. So now uh, we have three box reversal. What happens if we change to one box reversal, ATR scaling? And uh, you need to just fool around with this. And so here is the uh, upward striding climax that we just saw in early November. So now we're getting very little data. This is the month of November, effectively. A correction, a little bit of a base right here, and then a turn back up to the area of resistance. And we'll see whether or not we're in a range bound situation, bounded by call it 401 or 400 at the high and down here at 388 at the low. So this is using ATR scaling. Now, one of the things I do is I will, once I know what the ATR scaling, which in this case is 0.8, let's change it here to user defined. And let's try a one point scaling, which is really close to 0.8.
And we see here that we get a lot of information still. And uh, this, use, this is really useful information, beautiful 15 minute chart. Now, in the case of doing a, a vertical chart based on this, let's go to a sharp chart. And uh, this is weekly, but we wanna change all this. Let's go to, uh, in this case, let's go to a one hour chart and candlestick. Okay, so this is, now you can see on the vertical chart, note the run up into the climax in early November. And then the reaction here is a climactic low, temp to rally, a successful test of this low, and then another successful test completing a base type structure, beautiful on the intraday basis. And now it's rallying up to this prior high here in the early part of November. So you can see all of this on the vertical chart by going to a intraday time frame. Now look at this. We see all of this on the one hour chart on the vertical, but we looked at the 15 minute chart on the point and figure. And you'll often want to match up your intraday charts to your vertical charts in the time frame that you're working in. And so they will be different time frames. The one hour chart and the 15 minute chart for the triple Qs seem to work well together on the one box method. And so you're gonna line those up. And the only way you're gonna know how to do that is to fool around with them. And uh, here, let's uh, turn around and let's change this to uh, 10 minute data. Ooh, this is gonna be really short term. Now, here is from the middle of November, look at the 10 minute, these are each one of these bars is 10 minutes. And here's a nice little accumulation structure, a pullback and a test, and then a jump up and out and now a backup. This looks pretty constructive from the perspective of higher prices. So how, what do we do now? Let's change this to a point and figure chart. Go to the bottom here. We'll go point and figure. Uh, let's make this a five minute point and figure. We know that we're going to have to change this to ATR scaling so that we get a sense. Let's do one box reversal, ATR scaling. And here is what we just looked at on a point and figure chart. And so there you can see, look at this beautiful structure right here. This looks very tradable from the perspective of it being a reaccumulation. Comes down for a test, makes a higher low, then makes another test. It has a beautiful run up and out for a short-term trader. That could be very attractive. Uh, 0.4 scaling, one box reversal, five minute point and figure. So uh, you can run these point and figures in all different time frames. You just have to know the proper scaling features to be able to get the granularity of the types of charts that you want to look at. And we have officially burned up a half an hour just talking about this. Tell me what you think. Is this useful to you? We can turn around and start to introduce why coffee and characteristics and uh, methodology, strategy, and so on to these charts in future episodes. But if this is helpful to you, I want to keep doing it. And uh, with that, have a great holiday, everyone. Uh, please be safe, careful, healthy, and all that. I really appreciate you being here, and we will see you next time on Power Charting. Take care. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.